the next topic we're going to discuss is that of command substitution. So we are going to, to discuss it in the context of quoting, but it's really, I mean, it's, it is a quoting mechanism in so far that it uses a back tick quote, or the back quote that you can see here, that you find on the top left of your keyboard generally near the escape key. Um, so it's a form of quoting, but it's really, um, it's really something more than that. It's, uh, it's a way to actually execute commands inside of an expression and substitute the result of that command to uh, the syntax that uh, allowed you to execute the command. So this is a little vague and maybe like, yeah, vague and theoretical. So let's take a look at a practical example. This is the date. So I'm trying to do echo this is the date in my bash shell. Enter. And well, no surprise there. Okay, I'm sure uh, all of you expected that. But what if inside of displaying this is a date, what I really meant is I want to display this is the, and then I want you to display the result of executing the date command. So we don't have any way to do that that we that we listed so far, okay, that we considered so far. So this is where the backtick quotes come into play. I can do this. Oops, I can type this is the and then backtick date backtick. And look at what's happening. So the echo is still displaying this part of the message, okay, as intended actually. But then date is not interpreted as just text. It is between backtick quotes, so it is actually interpreted as a command that the shell needs to execute before to completing execution of the echo statement. So this command is executed. This is the output of the date command, and the output of the command itself is substituted to the expression backtick date backtick. Okay? So this is really convenient. Uh, this is really convenient because this is something that was missing from our toolkit until now. Um, I'm going to go back to something that we said in a previous video. We mentioned in the previous video that the weak quoting was not actually affecting the, the back tick. Okay, so that means that you can encase all of this in double quotes and that allows you to say uh, things like, and I cannot really find a sentence that makes sense, but here is a star and then the date. Right, there you go. So we have a bunch of, of meta character this time. You can see that they are not properly neutralized. Uh, but I still can get this date command to execute. And the result of running the date command is inserted here inside my expression. So this is pretty nifty. Um, the syntax I just showed you right now, the back tick or, or back quote syntax, is however considered obsolete. So you should avoid using it. There is a newer syntax in Bash that is much preferred to that one, and I'm going to explain in a minute why it is actually preferred. But for now, let's just look at the syntax itself. So instead of using back tick, you can achieve exactly the same thing here by using the following notation. So I'm removing the back ticks, okay? And then I'm putting dollar, opening parenthesis, and I close the parenthesis where the command I want to execute ends. And there we go. So it does exactly the same thing. It's still command substitution, okay? Um, you can see that it works in double quote because the dollar symbol is actually uh, interpreted even when it's in double quote. So we talked about that and I mentioned that, well, the dollar symbol is interpreted uh, when you do weak uh, quoting because uh, we're going to use it with variables and something else. Well, here is a something else we use a dollar symbol for, okay? Dollar opening parenthesis, closing parenthesis is going to allow you to specify a command you want to execute. And by the way, uh, whether you use uh, the dollar parenthesis uh, syntax, which I really recommend, or the antiquated backtick syntax. Uh, if you wanted to use some uh, some special option of the command, I'm looking here for something real quick that we can uh, uh, test. Yeah, sure. What about the RFC format? Let's see if that looks different. So if I type date and date dash r, oh uh, yeah, it looks different. Okay, so let's use that. So I just wanted to 
to illustrate here that if you had actually an expression here that is more complicated that you wanted to uh, to execute with options, with arguments and stuff like that, it's still working just the same. Okay, that's why we enclose the whole thing between the the dollar um, parentheses uh, syntax or the backtick syntax. Okay, so both of them are going to work without problem. So I mentioned that the backtick syntax was a little bit uh, considered obsolete. Uh, its usage was discouraged. But I didn't say why, you know, the, the other syntax, the dollar parenthesis syntax is much better. So let's take an example here. Let's see first what I have here. I have, uh, I'm going to have to introduce a, a little command just so that we can do something uh, interesting. Um, so I'm going to create real quick uh, <clears throat> a file named my file. So bear with me. Okay. Is one line of text and another one here. Oh, surprise. Guess what? There are many more lines of text in this file. Okay. So I just needed a, a text file. Let me save that and close the editor. So I just needed a, a text file here that contains more than uh, one line of text. So now I can use a command that we'll talk about later again in the course, but I'm just introducing it for the sake of my, my, de my little demonstration. We're going to use a, a command named WC, uh, word count, and I'm going to say I want to count how many lines there are in my file. So that looks about right, okay? There are six lines of uh, text in my file. So that's the output of this command. All right, and now we are going to use this command uh, just as uh, an example, okay? As something to, to illustrate the, the special syntax I'm about to introduce. So I could do something such as echo, and then, um, well, I could say the result, result is and then I'm going to close that double quote use that command substitution syntax and say inside of here wc-l my file so what's happening here I want to display a sentence on the screen the result is and follow it by the result of actually applying the wc-l uh, command to my file so this was uh, the result of that command, okay, you can see that it has been inserted, nothing new here. But when it gets interesting is if I want to say, for example, the command I want to execute here is going to be the result of executing an over command, and that over command is going to be an echo command, so the echo command is going to produce some text, and then I'm going to take that text and I'm going to execute it. That's what the second, the outermost um, dollar parenthesis syntax is going to do. And then the result of all that is going to be appended at the end of the string, the result is, and displayed by echo here. So that's getting a little involved, right? Uh, especially that here, I'm going to say to make sure that my echo doesn't, uh, in this case it's not really useful, but to make sure that there's no meta character here, I'm going to use single quote. So again, let's work this out, you know, um, in our minds before we run it. Let's start by the innermost part. There is a strong quoting of an expression wc-l my file. So if there was any, any meta character here, like for example, uh, my file star, it would be neutralized, okay? So I'm going to neutralize all those meta characters and uh, make sure that I, uh, that I actually uh, echo this exact string, okay? So wc-l my file, or if I have meta character, my file star, for example, okay? So the result of this, of executing this echo command is going to be substituted here, and the result is going to be wc-l my file. So now I use that string wc-l my file inside an over command substitution, you know, uh, syntax. So I'm saying, telling the shell, run that. So I use that string as a command, like if I typed it on a bash interpreter, and I execute it. So I get, you know, the result of executing that command, which is in this case six, and then a space, and then my file. And then I concatenate this inside the string, the result is. So the result is six and a space in my file. 
and I pass that to the echo command that uh, joyfully displays it on the screen. So that's what's supposed to happen, and this is indeed what happens when I run that little example. So this is a good uh, this is a good kind of expression. It, its utility its utility is uh, how to say <laughs> arguable in practical term, but it's very useful to make sure that you are capable to understand. Uh, expression that are typed as a shell, just the same way that the shell will understand them. So it, get, it helps you develop more insight as to how the shell interprets actually the commands that you uh, that you type. And uh, when you try to train yourself doing that, don't hesitate to go for very needlessly complicated expression because that's a way to stretch you know your understanding to make sure you understand when you have sing what happened when you have single quotes inside of common expression inside of double quote inside of etc etc you should be able to interpret this no matter how complicated and I should even add how needlessly complicated the expression is, okay? After all, when you're going to look at code from colleagues, sometimes you will stumble on needlessly complicated code. You still need to be able to understand it, right? So this is a good uh, exercise for practice, and this is a, a good type of question that uh, you may find in quiz or exams. So watch out for that kind of, uh, for that kind of stuff.